Okay, we're going to do 11.2 uh, volumes of rotational solids. We're actually going to do this over three, count them, three days. Now, this is something I always found difficult in university. You might not, though. The reason I found this hard, it wasn't so much the math that was hard, although it's not easy. What I found hard was picturing the things. You have to have pretty good spatial awareness to picture some of the things you're doing when you're looking at volumes of rotational solids. And my spatial awareness is not good. I can't picture things when I'm spinning them and turning them and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you'll see what I mean in a second. First of all, we need to define a plane. A plane is a large object with wings that flies coast... No, no, that's not what it is. Not in math. A plane in math is a flat, two-dimensional surface that extends infinitely far. So these things drawn here are not planes because they don't go on forever, right? If this side went on forever, and this side went on forever, and this side went on forever, and this side went, that'd be a plane. These are plane regions. So it's a portion of a plane. It's a finite plane, you could think of it, instead of an infinite plane. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these plane regions, and we're going to rotate them. We're going to rotate them around one of their sides. So in this first question, we're going to be rotating along this side of the shape. But you could even, you know, for more difficult questions, we don't think we're going to get there this year. We just don't have time. You could rotate it across the line down here. Okay? So it would look a little bit different if you rotate it across there. Anyway, let's start with this. If I rotated this shape, this planar region right here, and I rotated it all the way around that line, do you know what it would look like? If you have good spatial awareness, you would know that it would look like look like a ball, wouldn't it? It would look like a sphere. Most awkward word to say in the English language. Sphere. Uh, so, yeah, that's what you would get. Now, good luck to me drawing a sphere. But basically, you draw like a circle. You draw one side. You draw the back side with maybe dotted. You could do the same thing at the front if you want. There's one. Do another dotted at the back. I don't know. You get the idea. If you rotated this around, you get a sphere. Okay, what if we took this, looks like a rectangle, right? It is a rectangle, and we rotated it around this. This is what the arrow is telling you. It's telling you which, which side are you rotating it around. What if we rotate it around there? Do you see what it looked like? Kind of looked like a wheel, wouldn't it? Uh, it would be a cylinder. So again, good luck to me drawing it. Basically, you get this skinny cylinder that kind of looks like this. And I could draw the dotted line here. And the last one, you take this triangle and you rotate it all the way around this side here. What do you get? Can you picture what the bottom would now become? Become a circle. Because what you'd end up with is not a circle. That would just be part of the shape. You would end up with a shape that looks like this. You got a circle on the bottom and it goes up to a peak, which means it's a pyramid. This is called a circular pyramid. And what we're going to do in the next few days is we're going to think for ourselves, okay, if we did do this, if we did rotate this around and got the sphere, what would be the volume of that sphere? If we did rotate this around and get the cylinder, what's the volume of this purple cylinder? And if I did rotate this around and got a circular pyramid, what's the volume of this circular pyramid? So we're going to learn three methods, one each day. Today we're going to learn the disk method. So the disk, me the disk method sorry, can be used as long as the rotational solid has no hollow space in it. So if you look at all these things here, there's no space in them, right? There's no hollow parts, there's no empty regions. So because of that, we can use the disk method. Uh, later on, we're going to learn another method where you could have spaces in it. So one important thing is the radius of rotation. And what this is, is a line segment that extends from the axis of rotation to the edge of the area being rotated. So let me kind of give you an example of that. If we look at our three things here, the radius of rotation goes from the axis of rotation, that's the yellow right here, that's what we're rotating around. In this case, it's a vertical line, and it goes all the way to the edge of the surface being rotated. Now you could draw it here, and you could also draw it here, and you could also draw, well, it's not vertical, but I could also draw it here, or whatever. And you might say, well, wait a minute, where you draw it, that's going to determine how big it is. You don't have to worry about that. Basically, we're going to find a function that gives you the length anywhere along this axis of rotation. And the second one, I guess they're all going to be the same length in this one. Here's the axis of rotation, the highlighted bit, 
And so we would draw a vertical line again. Whoa, that's so not vertical. All the way up, and you could do that anywhere along here you want. I can't draw a vertical line. That one's not too bad. Okay, so that's the edge. This is the edge of the thing being rotated. This is the edge of the thing being rotated. On this one, you're not going to have vertical lines for your radius of rotation. You're going to have horizontal lines. Why can't I draw? I can't draw lines today. And again, I know that the length makes a difference here, but our function will take this all into account. Uh, so this is the edge right over here. Here's our axis of rotation here, and this is the edge of the area being rotated over there. Okay, now we're, when we rotate these things, we're going to have them on coordinate planes. And if you, we're going to focus on revolving around the x-axis and revolving around the y-axis. Again, when you get more complicated ones, you might rotate around different lines. Like you might rotate around the line y equals 2, or rotate around the line x equals 4. But uh, I don't think we're going to get there this year. It's fine. It's just actually a, a fairly minor difference if you have those situations. So if you're revolving around the x-axis, I'm going to give you the formula right here. You're going to take pi. It's maybe not too surprising that when you've got circular motions that pi shows up. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and then you're going to take an integral from a to b. You're going to integrate the function. However, you have to square the function before you integrate. And this is all in terms of dx. And if it's revolved around the y-axis, there's only one thing that's going to be different. Exactly the same. The only thing different is it's going to be f of y for your function squared in terms of x. So I think I skipped this, but now is a good time to say it. If your radius of rotation is vertical, so that is like these first ones. Can you see this would be like the x-axis, right? So you're rotating around the x-axis, and that's if it's vertical, then it must contain x variables. When we revolve around the x-axis, you must use x variables, and that's why you have this x right here, right? Uh, and then, so in this one, we have a horizontal radius of rotation, and it says if it's horizontal, the function must contain y variables. This would kind of be like the y-axis right here, and so it all fits together because, yes, for this one, you end up having y's in the equation. So this one, x is in equation. I mean, I think I'm, it's overkill, right? I don't need to do all this. And for revolving on the y-axis, you're going to have y's in your equation, or in your function, I guess maybe I could have written. Okay, let's do a couple of questions here. Find the volume of a solid generated when the region enclosed by y equals negative x squared plus 4 and y equals 0 is revolved around about the x-axis. Can you believe you're about to solve this question? This is getting pretty tough. So let's draw our coordinate plane. Let's sketch this, y equals negative x squared plus 4. I'm hoping you remember that uh, this is a parabola that opens downwards and has a vertex at 0, 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's a dot right here. Now we're going to um, revolve around the x-axis. So we only have to go down as far as the x-axis here, right? We're not going to go down further than that. So let's see. If we put 1 in here, again, you could probably graph this. If you remember graphing parabolas pretty well, you could graph this by going over 1, down 1, over 1, down 3, and we've made it to the x-axis. And same on this side, because of symmetry, it's going to look exactly the same. So I'm hoping you remember that. If not, you could definitely plug in some points. I don't know why I put that arrow there, because we're only interested in this bit. Now, we're going to rotate that around. So can you picture what that looks like? Well, in this case, it doesn't totally matter, even if you can picture it. I don't know, does it kind of look like a pseudo football or a little bit like a sphere, not exactly, whatever. So there's two things we want to be clear about. What's the rotational axis? What's it rotating around? Well, that's this, right? It's the x-axis. I told you, for this year, we're going to make the rotational axis either the x-axis or the y-axis. It tells us right here, it's the x-axis. So the x-axis is the rotational axis. And then we want to draw that radius of rotation. And you remember where that goes from? It goes from the rotational axis up to the edge of the thing being rotated. So you're going to draw from the yellow line up to 
anywhere you want along here. It doesn't matter where you draw it, okay? As long as you recognize, the most important thing you recognize is the line that you would draw must be vertical. You have a vertical line. Again, why am I putting arrows on this? You have a vertical line when you draw this. So this is the radius of rotation. So we have a, a vertical radius of rotation. Remember what that means? If it's vertical, the function must contain x variables. Or the other way you can look at it is, if it's revolved about the x-axis, which, you know, we're, we're doing, we're revolving about the x-axis, this is the formula we're going to use right here. So, let's write that down. Okay, here we go. I've written down the formula. So, let's see if we can figure this out. We have got v equals pi. Now, what's a and b? Well, those are the edges of the things being rotated. Where we got? We got down here at negative 2 is how far it goes to the left, and it goes far up as 2 to the right. So we have to go from negative 2 as our low bound and 2 as our upper bound. Now, we want our function to be written in terms of x. Look, it's perfect. There's our function, and it's in terms of x. We have no y's in here. y is equal to this, so that's great. We can put that in. Negative x squared plus 4 is our function. But remember, we got to square it. And we're going to do this in terms of x. If we do that, we've got our answer. So I haven't left myself much room. Haha, <laughs> I'm such a cheater. I'm sorry if I've messed you up here. So the first thing we should do is actually square this. So I still have pi, negative 2, and 2. Okay, now we're going to square this, negative x squared plus 4. If you've got problems with that, you know what to do. Write it out two times over here, right? Uh, so negative x squared and negative x squared is positive, two negatives make a positive, x to the fourth. Then negative x squared times positive 4 is negative 4x squared, and 4 times negative x squared is another negative 4x squared, so those together make negative 8x squared. And finally, positive 4 and positive 4 is positive 16. Let's integrate. V equals pi. Um, we've got x to the fifth over 5 minus 8x cubed over 3 plus 16x. And we need to look at this from negative 2 to 2. And then we'll multiply by pi at the end. Gosh, I wish I had more room. Pi. Okay, we're going to start by plugging 2 in here. 2 to the 5th is 32, and that's over 5. Minus. 2 to the 3rd is 8, times another 8 is 64, and that's over 3. 16 times 2 is 32. Uh, what's this number down here? 3? Okay, then we need to uh, subtract. We're going to plug negative 2 in here now. Negative 2 goes in here to the fifth power is negative 32 over 5. Negative 2 goes in here. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8 times negative 8, I guess, is positive. You know, with positive 64 over 3. And then we put negative 2 in here. 16 times negative 2 is negative 32. Okay. I don't know. I have no room to do this. Let's uh, combine. Why not? Let's combine 32 over 5. Take away negative is, means plus. Another 32 over 5. That's 64 over 5. Minus 64 over 3. Take away another 64 over 3 is take away 128 over 3. And 32, take away negative 32 is plus 64. And we need to have common denominators, which I guess are 15. So, pi, 15, multiply top and bottom by 3, you get 192. I'm just going to do one denominator, 15. Hopefully that can save some space. Uh, minus, multiply by 5 here, so I'm 5 on the top, is 640. And multiply by 15, 640 times 15 is 960. Okay, we're going to do this and multiply it by pi and we're done. 960 minus 340 is 320, and 320 plus 192 is 512. 512 times the pi is 512 pi over 15. Gosh, it looks like something you can simplify. That's it. If you were to rotate this thing, if you were to revolve this thing around the x-axis, this is the volume that you would get. V equals, volume equals exactly that much right there. All right, let's try one more. This one's nicer, not so many fractions. Find the volume of the rotational solid generated by rotating the area in the first quadrant, bounded by y equals x squared, the y-axis, and the line y equals 9 around the y-axis. It sounds even more complicated. 
All right, let's just break this down here. Now, we're only interested in the first deck, um, quadrant, but we want to go as high as y equals 9, right? Um, I don't know, maybe I'll go up here right now and put 9 and show that we want to go as high as this. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, whoops, I cheated. There you go, something like that. And I don't have to come out here very far because you know this shape. y equals x squared, we're only looking at the first quadrant. It goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. So it's a parabola that goes up like this. I know I missed the point, but you get the idea. It keeps going up, of course, but what we're interested in is this area here. We're going to take that area there and we're going to rotate it around the y-axis. So our rotational axis is right here. That's what we're rotating around. So can you picture what it would look like? I don't know. To me, I think it would look like some kind of solid dish, like a bowl, but it has no opening in the middle. Does that make sense? Um, so we need to get the radius of rotation. And the radius of rotation goes from the rotational axis to the edge of the plane being rotated. So it goes from here to here. This is the radius of rotation. It's horizontal this time. So because it's horizontal, the function must contain y variables. Or, because it's revolved around the y-axis, your formula is going to be this this time. And look, you have f of y instead of f of x. So I'm going to write that formula down. And I've learned from my mistakes. I'm starting right up to the top here. Okay, it has to be in terms of y. So v equals pi. So remember now, we're looking not from here to here. You wouldn't say, oh, the a is 0 and the b is 3, because we're rotating it this way. The a is 0 for sure, but the b is 9. You're rotating from 0 to 9. So those are your bounds here, 0 and 9. The other thing is, I know that this equation is y equals x squared, but you're not going to put x squared in here. How come? Because it has to be in terms of y. So what you will do is take your formula here and solve it for y. How would you do that? You take the square root of both sides, so you'd get x equals plus or minus the square root of y. Well, the plus or minus really won't matter, will it? Because look at our next step. We're going to take that square root of y, plus or minus, and we're going to square it. And once we square it, whether it's positive or it's negative, it's going to end up being positive. So this one is much faster than the last one. How come? Because look what happens when I square this. I just get y. The only thing I have to take the integral of is just y. So v equals pi. Then the integral for y is y squared over 2. And we're going to look at this from 0 to 9. So let's do it. v equals pi. Let's start with the 9. 9 goes in here, 9 squared is 81, so you get 81 over 2, minus, oh, you got to love zeros, 0 squared over 2 is just 0 over 2, or just 0. So in other words, your volume is equal to, don't worry about this part, 81 pi over 2. That is the volume. When you rotate that plane, that purple plane right there, you rotate it around the y-axis, that's the volume of the shape. Look at, I can't even picture it that well, and yet I can find the exact volume of it. Calculus, you never cease to amaze me.